right then, lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. We are back again with another match reaction. Arsenal have beaten Burnley at the Tough Mall. It is, it is what it is. Arsenal have beaten Burnley at the Tough Mall. It's, it, it, it was a very, very tight game. Very tight context. You thought Burnley would get an equalizer in that game. Uh, you thought Arsenal had the opportunity to get more goals in that game. It has finally ended. Arsenal won. Burnley nil. And this is the live instant match reaction. I would love to get your thoughts in who was your man of the match. That is the most important question um, I would love to ask just after the game. Who was your man of the match? We had a, you know, we, we had a couple of good performances in there. Odegaard had a very good performance. Aaron Ramsdale had a good performance as well. I think Pate had a good performance. And um, and Ben White with Gabriel also had a good performance. Actually, I thought you know I, I thought there was a this was a real test for Gabriel and Ben White because we've already said they should be playing together. Um, they do complement each other, but we have we, we had never really seen them uh, play together. So the real test was: can they actually play together? Um, are they good together? And I think by the end of this, by the end of this video, we will agree to one thing, and maybe to dis uh, you know, maybe disagree um, on a couple of other things. But we will agree those two are just good together. Smash a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel as well, um, and of course, make sure you do tell me your thoughts in the uh, in the comment box below. What was your key moment, and who was your man of the match? Let's try to get into it. In the first half, I thought Arsenal started off very, very well, but Burnley were better. I think they had more; they had a clear plan. Like Burnley, they played their usual four-four-two. Um, if you look at how both teams actually lined up, they they, they didn't really make any changes to uh, their usual lineup, did they? Arsenal starting off with a four-three-three, the first time we have seen um, you know the formation, and I know many out there are really gonna be thrilled with that win we're gonna be really i was thrilled with that with the performance but i was re really thrilled with uh um the way we set out um aaron ramsdale made his second start in the premier league and i think he did he really didn't disappoint we'll talk about the penalty incident um later on which i think wasn't a penalty because he clearly uh comes for the ball he gets there first and gets contact um on the ball then the uh, the, the striker um of the play the Burnley player gets contact with him it wasn't never it was never a penalty uh i'm on Arsenal's side this uh you know this time many people already tell me um i'm never on Arsenal's side um kian tiani gabriel ben white and tomiasu like you see on the screen um were the back four the, the midfield three is where that is where it gets more interesting the midfield three pate Odegaard and ESR. Now, if you're playing weaker sides like Burnley, you have all the rights to go like that. But against Manchester City, he didn't play, um, a, you know, a CDM. He really didn't play a holding midfielder. Um, and we faced it rough. But uh, I think Odegaard was class. I think Patty was class. I think ESR was not as good as we would have wanted him to be. But we'll get into that as well. Um, Nicola Pepe, trash today. Definitely trash today. Um, Saka, not really that brilliant. Um, as well as Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Uh, I, I, we did see a couple of moments from Bukayo Saka. Not the Saka we know. Um, he's all about making things happen. But in this game, I don't think he, he really did that. I don't think he really gave us uh, the sucker we want to see. He really, he was never about making things happen. Um, non really. Piel Merkabameyang, yeah, I might, we, we didn't really create much for him, really. Um, so I, I wouldn't really blame him so much. And I, I, and of course, the, you know, given the defensive nature of Burnley, we had to create more chances um, than we could score. And, and, and definitely, I, I don't think we created so much. We'll get into that later on in the video as well. Um, and then Nicola Pepe, trash. Trash today, definitely trash. It was all about individual brilliance. And that's why Odegaard stood out and Pepe didn't stand out. The likes of, you know, um, Aubameyang, Pepe, I don't think they stood out because it was always about individual brilliance and they never did that for me today. So what were the positives? 
we picked out of course i need to get your thought your thoughts on the positives i had a, I, I had a, i had my pen i had a couple of positives uh you know i picked out in that game and i also had a couple of negatives that i did pick out in that game before we go into the individual um individual uh, you know performance of these players right so let us get to the positives number one i think ben white and gabriel held on to um ashley Barnes and chris wood better they didn't score now we expected it and i said it in the preview if i, I look not many people have watched the preview um because i put it out very very late i think one hour to the game that was ridiculous wasn't it but i said they are always gonna hornet that ball in the air all the time i was watching you know that ball, you know that that th th that match with a friend and we were literally counting every time uh burnley put that ball in the air and that's what they do and they perfectly do it well so they were always gonna find ashley Barnes or chris wood that is all that is all they do and and, and when we were talking about the danger men uh in that game uh for Burnley we, we we mentioned Ashley Barnes uh he wasn't really much of a threat I think he had a bad day in office today uh Chris Wood who was also very very lost courtesy of Gabriel Magales um and Ben White and also uh you know um uh, Ma uh, I was about to say Maxwell Connett but it is actually Dwight McNeil I I, I didn't see much from Dwight McNeil as well. I didn't see the, the crosses, the regular crosses. Um, I didn't see, the, you know, the, the, the sprinting, the runs, the intelligent, uh, you know, uh, the intelligent uh, crosses from him. I expected more, uh, you know, of that from Dwight McNeil. He really didn't do that. Um, and I think it was really perfect from Tomiyasu and Tierney. They absolutely, because today, unlike other matches, you didn't see Kian Tierney run up front um, often, leaving his side very, uh, very, very open. You didn't see that. The same, you know, the, the same goes with uh, uh, with Takiro Tomiyasu. He didn't come forward, uh, so you know, so much. He was never exposed, and I, I think. It was more of a game plan. This time I saw a game plan. I saw Arsenal trying to execute something in that match. It, there was a game plan. Whether you like it or not, uh, there was a game plan uh, you know, you know, for that Burnley game. Arsenal were never ripped apart. And we have to agree, the better, you know, the better um, chances, of, you know, the better time of, of, of the game, Burnley had the ball. They possessed well. They were comfortable in possession. They were also comfortable when they didn't have the ball. I think they they were really, really absolutely good on and off the ball. When they had the ball, you felt like they, they were confident, but they never ripped us apart. And I, I think game plan number one for Burnley was uh, Arsenal are going to play uh, that kind of you know uh, offensive football, get them onto uh, you know onto the break. And then look for the head of Chris Wood or look look for the feet of Ashley Barnes. That was their game plan. And if you look at how they started the game, that's what they were trying to do. Look for Chris Wood or Ashley Barnes. And I'm going to give a lot of credit. If We will get into the player ratings. Um, I will upload the video. But one of the masterclass performances we have had um, today have been from Gabriel and Ben White. This is the second time they played together, but the communication was key. Communication is always key, uh, you know, in that, you know, in, in, in that pair. We've seen actually Ben White good, in, not really good in the air, because I think uh, the challenges, uh, you know, he was, you know, the balls he was clearing uh, were off, you know, any challenge. But I think he was positioning himself very well. He met the ball before it met Chris Wood, and that is what you've got to do with uh, with such defenders. Chris Wood is gigantic. He's big. He's tall, uh, and he's done all. You know, he's done that all his life. So you, you really can't, uh, you know, match him. If, if, if you know, like, is, is there something Pablo Mari wanted to do with uh, with Romelu Lukaku? You can't match those players um, in terms of physique. And in the air, if unless you're so good in the air, like Gabriel Magales, you can't match Chris Wood. So what Gabriel, uh, what Ben White did is. Meet the ball before it meets Chris Wood. Meet the crosses, uh, head the ball away before it actually uh, meets Chris Wood. And I think he did brilliantly, brilliantly well in that game. The other thing I noticed between the two, um, apart from the communication, is they didn't, 
they, they kind of played a high line, uh, but not that dangerous high line. And it was very, very helpful because that is when, uh, that is how, you, you know, you, know you, you, you cut off players like Dwight McNeil. All they do is expose your high line. That's what they do. Expose the high line. So we didn't play that, you know, that very dangerous, you know, high line. Whenever we were in possession, you had Gabriel and Ben White, not, you know, not so deep. Again, not very, very advanced. Um, and when we lost the ball, um, we were not, you know, we didn't sit very deep. And again, we didn't sit very, you know, in, in very, very advanced positions. If I can remember, how many times were we exposed? I think one or two. Yeah. I'm gonna say one or two. One is, um, you know, um, actually the the only chance I, the only clear chance I remember uh, for Burnley is when Ramsdale gets to commit a foul, which is actually not a foul, so it's not a penalty. I think um, we were ex we were cut open there. We were, you know, we, we, we were we were exposed. That is the only chance i remember and shout out ramsdale we will talk about him he really did a very very good job um in that game but apart from that try to make me remember when were we exposed when were we cut across i mean you know, when were we cut open i don't remember great work from the defense uh brilliant work brilliant work i think ramsdale did command this area very well uh and i also think the defense did very very well another positive i've looked at is the four three three and now, if, if you have, if, if you noticed, we played Partey, Smithwell, and Odegaard. Odegaard was a little bit just ahead of Partey, so Partey didn't go into uh, those advanced areas that he loves because you know he did have a player like uh, Lokonga or or or, or, or Xhaka behind him. And at times, I hate it when I see Partey being, uh, you know, being you know, the man that does the donkey work. I hate it because I know there is a lot we can get from him. And in this game, believe me or not, we didn't get to see the best of Thomas Partey. I, I don't know how many people will agree with me, but we didn't get to see the best of Thomas Partey. We didn't get to see it. And the reason is, you know, for me, the reason is very clear. The responsibilities Partey has to do were taken on by ESR, who I think had a little bit of a stinker. How many people agree with me? I think ESR had a stinker today. Not the worst performance, really, but he didn't really show me. He didn't really show me. But again, um, uh, Odegaard, who was absolutely all over the pitch and absolutely so, so good today. So... That meant that Pate, all Pat had to do was pick up the ball from the likes of Gabriel, pick up the ball from the likes of uh, um, uh, Gabriel and, 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 and White and Tomiassi, and then distribute it to uh, you know, Odegaard and Smith, who had the responsibility to create our chances, but also to make sure that Arsenal looked sharp up front. Odegaard did, Smith, who lacked in a minute. But I'm going to say this, it was a positive. The 4 3 3 gives us a load of of room to expose the opponent it gives us a you know it gives us a lot of room if you look at we will look at some of the heat maps um of our players odegaard was almost everywhere and you know you know in that uh, in that area where i thought if you had played alexander lacazette i saw i said this in my preview we should have played alexander lacazette rather than pl america Bamiyang. and the reason is very clear Bamiyang was useless in this game not because he's a bad player, not because he was, you know, not because of any reason. I think you needed someone who could hold play. That's it. If you looked at how um, Ever uh, Everton beat Burnley last Monday, Demarai Gray was running into spaces, but those spaces were actually uh, created by Calvert, uh, Calvert Dominic Lewin. Now, what you, uh, was it Lewin? Was it Ben Godfrey. I think it was Ben Godfrey because Lewin was was injured. I think it was, you know, was it Godfrey? Um, I've got to check that. But the whole essence, you know, the whole essence of having a player like Lacazette play in this game is always to have that player that sits back, uh, you know, 
receives the ball and then waits for the uh for uh for the runs of Saka, Pepe, uh and Odegaard and Emil Smith Wow. I think Abamyang was absolutely useless in this game and it, it wasn't his fault. It was absolutely not his fault. Um going you know go, crossing in the ball and, and and going up in the air it's never gonna work with a player like Alexander Lacazette and it's never gonna work with a player like uh you know with, with a player like Pierre Lemurk Abamyang. So I thought um Arsenal really did did poorly um, especially Mikel did poorly to play um, Pelemrika Bamiang, but I also thought the four-three-three gave us a lot. We show, you know, we, we saw the best of our young talents. We saw the best of Saka. We saw the best of Nicola Pepe. We, you know, you could see them get space, run into space. But you know, if anyone didn't use the chance, if anyone didn't use, uh, you know, you know, the, the ability to run into space, it was their own fault because. That was a performance where everyone had the chance to get the ball and do whatever they wanted with it. So a 4-3-3, Mikel, um, I'm giving him a credit in this game. I'm giving him a credit for the 4-3-3 because, again, it's, it's, it's so different from the 3-4-3 or the 3-5-2. And what it does um, is it it just allows you get, you know, you know it, it just allows you play your own kind of football. Look at Liverpool. Look at Manchester City. Whenever they play that, you know, 4-3-3, you know, it just gives you life. It just gives you an advantage over the small teams. And that's what I've always been crying for. That's what I've always said. We need to get better than these small teams. We need to be a little bit better than them. But you can never be better than these small teams if you play primitive football, if you play primitive, you know, uh, formats. Because for me, 3-5-2... Is a primitive, you know, a primitive format. You can play it if you're playing City, Liverpool, um, Chelsea. I don't have a problem because they are better than us. They are they're world class squads. Yeah, but if you play a three five two against Burnley, it doesn't make sense. So, if we have played a four three three against Norwich, can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Watford, Watford have just beaten Norwich three one. Imagine. And at the Emirates Stadium, we only scored once against Norwich. And, and and that speaks volumes about why I think Arsenal should continue playing more progressive football um, in more progressive styles like that, you know, th like the 4-3-3. Now, the other positive, like, like, you know, I saw, make sure you have your positives because I have, I have so many of them, uh, uh, you know, jotted down. The other positive I saw in this game was... The ability to progress the ball. I, I'm, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a round of applause to the lads, especially Martin Odegaard and Bukayo Saka. I, I love it when we go forward. I love it when we do not pass the ball backwards all the time, and it's gonna really help us because Gabriel and Ben White really have that vision. They, they're, they're both. Uh, visionary um, center backs. So I think we get a lot when we play both of them, uh, you know, at center back. Now, it, it, it's so different, and I'm going to say this, it's very, very different when we play a 3-5-2 because it's very, very primitive, very defensive. You're just looking to be safe. In this game, Asta were not looking to be safe. Yes, we played onto the term, into the, you know, just into the hands of, uh, you know, uh, Sean Dyke in terms of tempo uh, and in terms of pace, which I didn't like, by the way. We played at a very, very slow pace. I didn't like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've got to speak about it. I didn't like that. But we were progressive. Every chance we got, we were looking to get the ball forward. In turn, we shall create more chances. In turn, we shall score more goals. That is how it starts, right? Well, look, I'm not saying that Mikel has, has done the best job, but I knew he was going to win these two games. Everybody knew. But the matter, uh, the, the matter is what is the nature of the win? The first, the, the first win against Norwich, there was, there was a lot of bull crap there. There's a lot of bullshit there. There's a lot of, I think, the international break... And then, you know, as we had not won a game, we had a lot of new players coming in. But this was more like the second, you know, the second, you know, the second game syndrome. You know, you're just getting into that game after winning, right? So you have the, you know, you have some little confidence somewhere, 
you have you know you have that little confidence uh you know in your squad but you also have the ability uh you know to to connect with you know others and that's what we did players connecting with each other tomiyasu that was his second game um actually the back line the back four that was the second time in a row that they played together i mean there's credit there isn't it there is credit there that was the second time the back four were playing together right um and how many changes did we make um uh, uh to our starting 11 against norwich i think it was only was it was it only one Ainsley Matlin House dropping out and Pepe coming in. Oh, okay, there were two. There were two. Smith Wall and a uh, Smith Wall and um Pate replaced Ainsley Matlin House and um and 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 Albert Sambila Conga, who I think should be starting Arsenal games regularly. We you know we've got to find uh a way to you know to just you know to fit him into that squad, right? So I think the consistency is also there. If we can use the same lineup, if we can use the same squad, the same eleven against Spurs, against Brighton, against Crystal Palace, it will get the you know it will it, it will definitely um, get us where we want to. Like we have already said, this squad is better than we you know it's better than what it is giving us at the moment. It is not a top ten squad. It is not a top eight squad. It should be at least top six top five now speaking about um the, you know, the win and the table yeah uh, yeah there were a couple of positives like i said now the negatives i'm not going to be I'm, I'm not really going to be negative but let's speak about one or two negatives in the game then we go into the individual brilliance uh of the players and and how they really played together you know in this game right so um the negatives that i picked out in this game uh, one is um look yeah i know we are playing Burnley at the tough mall but we gave them a little possession we didn't play like a big team and I, I think that comes from the fact that uh one we were away from home but it also happened against norwich norwich had a lot of moments in that camp right so we've got to get you know, we've got to get more uh offensive in my opinion, we've got to get more offensive and we've got to take more control. So, uh, really, I didn't love it. I didn't love it when we gave, um, you know, chance of possession to uh, to Burnley. We've got to work. Um, but I think, generally, it was a very, very good performance. So, right. Let's try to get into the individual performance of the lads and see what exactly uh, happened in that game. Let's first, you know, um, let's first look at um, the statistics of the game i mean who doesn't really look at statistics right here we go so Burnley had 45 percent ball possession and arsenal had 55 percent ball possession right um and that's uh, and that is something I'm, I'm i'm talking about if it is chelsea and you know if it's Chelsea, City, United, they'll have the, the, the they'll have the lion's share of possession. Now, it's something that I've seen with Arsenal. We've got to work on that, right? We've really got to work on that. We need more and more minutes on the ball if we are going to create more chances and if you're going to score more goals, right? But we had an average of we had 13 shots on in total on goal. They had 18, right? And you can see uh, they had more shots on goal, uh, and and courtesy, that is courtesy uh, of their position, forty five percent shots on target. Both of us, uh, both uh, both teams had three uh, shots on target. Um, shots of target, Arsenal had four, um, they had ten uh, blocked shots. We had six, they had five corners. We had three, they had eight offsides to for Arsenal, four for. Uh, for Burnley, falls they had nine. We had eight um, yellow cards. We had one. They had two big chances. We had one big chance. They didn't have uh, big chances missed. We bi we missed one big chance, um, and they actually did miss any because they didn't have uh, shots inside the box. Right, shots inside the box. We had six. They had thirteen shots. You know, inside the box. Shots out at the box. We had seven. They had five. And goalkeeper saves. We had three. They actually had two. Right. Uh, 
well, it's some, it, it is something that, it is something that um, uh, you expected, didn't you know? Isn't it really something that you expected? Uh, passes. We had five hundred and twenty-two passes. They had three hundred and eighty-five passes. Accurate passes. We had four hundred and twenty-two, eighty-one percent passing uh, uh, passing accuracy, and they had two hundred and eighty-eight accurate passes. I think their low, um, you know, pass conversion comes from the fact that. Um, they they actually score. They, they actually use a lot of long balls. Now, if you look at um, the table, the win takes us to twelfth. The win takes us to twelfth, which is actually not bad, right? Which is actually not bad. We have scored two goals this season, and we have conceded nine goals. Right. Um. I mean. I mean. That really doesn't make any. You know. That that doesn't make it any better. Um. I could just move myself out of the way so that you could see. Uh. You know. It doesn't make it any better. It doesn't make any better. Arsenal need to score more goals now. We have a deficit of seven goals. Right. We have a deficit of seven goals. So we need to score more. We need to score more. But apart from Aston Villa that are playing right now, Crystal Palace, Southampton, Wolves, Leeds. Newcastle, Burnley, and Noach are all below us. We have six points uh, already, uh, you know, uh, and we are twelfth. We, we we have one more point, um, you know, than than Aston Villa, and one one more point than Crystal Palace. So that means, that, you know, the rest is still very very tight, and Arsenal, uh, you know, do have to score more goals, right? We have to score more goals. We have to collect more points. But I really love the win. I absolutely really, really did have the win. So let's get into some of these men and see how they performed, um, you know, in this game. Let's start off with Aaron Ramsdale, who I think had a very, very good performance. Ramsdale, um, you know, his hit map really doesn't matter, does it? Uh, a 7.6 rating from Sofa Score, uh, which I think is, um, is, is, is fair. Fair enough. Uh, how many touches? 58 touches. Um, uh, he had 26 accurate passes. Uh, do we have... Uh, saves. Uh, we really don't have saves here, so um, the statistics really don't matter for him. But I think Ramsdale, um, as as a player, if you're gonna say, if you're gonna speak about it, Ramsdale had a good game. Ramsdale absolutely had a good game because you know he had to stay a lot and he has to, you know, he had to stay, uh, you know, uh, on point. Those long balls that were always hitting uh, by the likes of, you know, uh, Johan Goodmanson uh, and Dwight McNeil and Josh, uh, you know, Josh Brown, you know, uh, uh, Brownhill um, and a couple of, uh, you know, other players, you know, were always a threat. But I think he really, really did well. Now, Ben White and Gabriel Magales got a 7.2 rating from Service Goal, uh, although I think Ben White should have, did, you know, should have got a little bit more uh, than that. But... Um, Let's see. Uh, you know, Ben White. He had um, he had five ground dwells, won three of them. Uh, he had eight uh, area dwells and won five of them. That was good. That was absolutely, absolutely good. So, how many touches did he have? Uh, he actually had forty-eight accurate passes out of fifty-eight. You know that is a massive improvement uh, for Ben White compared to his ridiculous uh, debut. Uh, you know there against Brentford. Um, uh, if you look at Gabriel uh, Gabriel's uh, uh, you know heat map, it again shows you uh, that he he really didn't play a high line. He was not getting exposed because he really didn't play high line. Good performance from Gabriel Magales, right? He had eight clearances um, in that game. He had 67 touches and he had 44 accurate passes out of 52. Right. That is, uh, that was good. Um, uh, dwells. Let's look at the dwells. I would love to look at his dwells. Um, he had four ground dwells and won three. And he also had uh, 10 aerial dwells and actually won only four. So it means um, in terms of area dwells, uh, he lost more area dwells than Ben White. And Ben White actually had better area presence than Gabriel Magales, but I also think he was outstanding. Tahekira Tomiyasu, his sit map only shows you that, you know, as long as he was ahead of, you know, as long as, you know, he crossed the, uh, the center line, that is as far as he could go. Right, seven point two rating. Um, I think he did very, very well in this game. He he actually won four out of four aerial dwells, 
and he had he attempted only one ground well and he was successful all right how many touches 79 touches um in that game uh, and of course he had uh, 40 out of 54 uh you know accurate passes which i think was also uh brilliant in that game so i think it was good uh Tiani didn't really have a very very good game uh today uh so, you know 6.6 is this 6.6 uh, rating from SofaScore? Really, you know, not really very, very good game. Uh, but I also think he was decent. I don't think he was actually absolutely trash. Pate, the pivot. Pate played alone um, in the pivot. If you look at uh, if you look at this system, it shows you that you know it was more like Pate playing a lot in the pivot, uh, and then Odegaard and Smith Rowe, you know, uh, really playing as two number tens, Pepe and Bukayo Saka. Uh, on the flanks and i think um it really worked for mikel it absolutely worked very very well for mikel ateta um right right 60 no 68 touches uh in the game 84 percent you know passing accuracy uh which i think was absolutely uh which i think was absolutely fine he lost position 10 times uh in the midfield one three Attempted three dwells in the air, only won one. Um, and again, uh, ground dwells two, and he won actually one of them, that w which is actually uh, brilliant. Another one, uh, if you look at Martin Odegaard, uh, I also think Odegaard had, you know, had a very, very good game. Odegaard also, also had a very, very good game. Uh, he had 74 touches um, and an uh, 80% uh, passing accuracy, 53, passing, uh, 53 passes. And that means only. Um, only eight passes didn't actually arrive to the destination where he intended them. If you look at his sitmap, he was absolutely everywhere, and that's what I was uh, talking about. And Miss Smith World didn't have a very, a very, a very good game, uh, and you can see his sitmap actually shows you that he was a little bit silent. He was a little bit silent. How many touches did he have in this game? Uh, he played sixty-one minutes, but um, how many touches did he have? Any touches did he have? He only had 42 touches. Only 42 touches. But they were accurate. 26 passes accurate out of 20, uh, 28. Pepe had a sinker as, as well as Piel Merica Bameyang. Uh, Saka was a little bit better than them, but was also very, very uh, quiet. So that is, uh, those are my thoughts, um, you know, with this, uh, you know, on this game. I don't know what you people, I don't, I don't know what you guys thought, um, about the game, but I would definitely want to know what were your, uh, you know, what were your uh, thoughts about this game eventually, right? Right, I'll, you know, I, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna get to the latest. Um, uh, thirteen shots. It's uh, it's a joke. 13 shots, uh, you know, Lexi is, is a joke. Alba is really not good these days. I don't know what's wrong uh, with him, but we didn't create much. We have also to put that into context. Um, he wasn't too good, but we didn't create much for him um, as well. Let's hope Laka uh, starts on the Tottenham game. Uh, all right. Chris says, Kosi, thanks. Please um, update us about the quarter uh, the Qatar takeover because um, I got a tweet that Kronky has accepted 7.3 billion uh, from them uh, need to be confirmed. Uh, this is according to Chris. There's nothing I know about that. Uh, uh, for more goals, Kosi Ateta should use Lacazette um, instead of a, a PL Merka Bameyang. Rams, they were good. Um, in the air, uh, like uh, I like his composure uh, and game. Yeah, absolutely. I think Ramster is, you know, Ramster is a good goalkeeper. It, it, it speaks volumes. You still remember in the transfer window when I told you I think many Arsenal fans are getting it wrong by, you know, crucifying him. I think he's a good goalkeeper, by the way. I think he's a good goalkeeper, right? Uh, it will be the most happiest. I will be the most happiest man uh, on earth if Qatar takeover um, comes true. Um, I'll, I it will. I, I will be assured. You guys, they will bring Hala and Neymar um, at Arsenal. And Simpson says Lokonga very great, but I need to see him play with Partey. Right, guys. So that is uh, um uh, that's the game. Uh, you know, who was your man of the match? I'd love to know. Uh, I'm going to pick up. Uh, I'd, I'd love you guys to call in as well. Um, I just forgot to paste the link in the comment section. Call in and let me know what your thoughts of this game were. All right. So call in and let me know what you thought about the game. Uh, 
uh, uh, Emmanuel says Aubameyang was completely off. Pepe awful. Ramsdale was great. The defense was more. Yeah, I think we defended well. I think we really, really defended well. Pepe, yeah, trash. Absolutely trash. And Aubameyang, I don't think there was much he could do in this game. I, I, I think I'm wrong, but I don't think there was much he could do in this game. Like I said, was you know, would have been the better player, right? So, Colin, the link is in the comment section. Colin, um, that's the link. Colin, and uh, tell me what you thought about the game. I'll be happy, uh, I'll be very very glad to hear from you. Odegaard was man of the match. I, I, I might not disagree with you. I might not disagree with you. Uh, I think he had a very very good game. I think he had a very very good game. Uh, regardless, three points. Uh, you know, obviously. Um, Back four was good. Uh, they win. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, I think they absolutely won all the duels. Uh, I think they uh, they won all the, they won all the duels. Uh, they had Pepe Saka awful, sloppy. Um, you know, in counter attack. All right. Uh, we're gonna have a caller on. Um, and I I'd love to get your thoughts on. By the way, so make sure you do uh, call in as well. Hello. Hello, boss. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm happy. Uh, finally, we had uh, to get a win in Burnley as much as we can because three points matters a lot. Yeah. Congratulations to the lads. They finally make it. We are standing now on six points. But here, the, I have some positives and the negatives in this game. Mm. First of all, I don't, I don't like this kind of sloppy passing in the back four. Okay? Yeah. They need to pass the ball very quick forward. You can hear like uh, Gabdiel is having like 64 touches and uh, uh, Ben White having like 84 touches, but they are passing the ball together by themselves. Hmm? I yeah. need a ball through, okay, from the back. Hmm? Put it forward, let them run, okay? Yeah. But so yeah, far, so right. good. We are in a transition of building from the back. Hmm? I could kudos to Pepe. No, 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 no. Kudos to Gabdiel and I think. Uh, Ben White, they did well. They did. They, they win all the duels in the in, in the what in the air, because yeah. finally we are putting balls in our boxes, putting balls in our boxes to make what fouls there so that they can get a penalty. But we get away with it. But also Ben White should take it a, a little bit serious because on the other game they can give out a penalty. You never know what VAR can yeah. do. Okay? Yeah, we cannot yeah, give I mean our opening chances. Yeah, I, I think that was that was really sloppy. That was so so sloppy from him. It was a sloppy pass. He need to be yeah. serious and to yeah. to game up his yeah. game. Otherwise, we have no time to waste because the table is running very fast. Each game is like a final, you know. Yeah. So, and another another negative, I don't understand what Abu is uh, is doing there at front. Yeah. Exactly because because I don't know why Odegaard is the one leading the press. It should be yeah, Abama Young to lead the press, yeah. followed by Pepe, then Odegaard. It's a combination of three. You can place one team and win the ball back, but it is only one man pressing. I don't understand this. It's only Odegaard running here and there. It is not good at all because they need to work as a team. You can see Abama Young is standing there. Pepe is not pressing. Odegaard cannot press. Next game is Tottenham. It's going to be very, very a battle, you know? I think Tottenham, they are playing Chelsea tomorrow. If they lose that game against Chelsea, hmm, Tottenham, Arsenal, it's going to be a battle. We cannot waste any time to drop points at this time of the moment. Yeah, Thank you so much, Kosi. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. I appreciate it, bro. All right. Thank you so much as well. Um, yeah, I, 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 mean, I think, you know, I, I think Alex makes very interesting points there. Very, very interesting, by the way. Um, and very real points because... I think if you look at the strikers, if you if, if you watch the Wolves game, they didn't score, right? They didn't score. But their striker in Rocky Gimenez, who I think will find his form, you know, later, um, you know, probably in the season, is doing a lot, right? It's doing a lot. The likes of, you know, the, the likes of Hurricane, even if they don't score, they do a lot. They help out. But Aubameyang needs to, I, I, I think he needs to learn this or, or, or else, um, you know, he will get dropped like Leno. That's it. Because, you know, he, he's, he's really going to get dropped like uh, like Ban Leno. Um, uh, congratulations to the Gunners. That's according to uh, Kadi. And then Xhaka says, uh, 
um, I take Patty as man of the match. Patty was good. Patty was really, really good. And he played in that pivot alone. So, I mean, it only makes sense if you give him man of the match. Uh, good evening, Broco. See, good evening to you, Gonza. Hope you're doing absolutely well. Um, I'm also well. I'm also doing very, very well. So that is for me. Um, that's it. We are now 12th on the table. Um, 12th. By the end of this game week, uh, the worst we can be is 13 it. So if we beat Tottenham in the coming game, we have high chances of getting into the top 10. And that is where we have to be. Be in the top 10 and fight from there, right? Don't be in the 20th, eight, you know, um, 19th, 17th. That is not where Arsenal is supposed to be. We've got to be, um, we've got to be in those top positions. We've got to be, uh, you know, up the table. And that is what I want to see. I want to see an Arsenal that is challenging. I want to see an Arsenal that is fighting for the ball. I, I want to see that fighting spirit uh, come back. I know Mikel Arteta has really spoken much um, about the performance, but one of the things we can, one or two things that we can actually uh, take away from this game is Arsenal need to be more consistent, right? Because just look at two wins, six points, and we are out from 20th to 13th. Imagine if we can get six wins in a row. That could take us, because look, everybody's going to say, oh, it's impossible. It's impossible. You know, it's very possible. Everton, five game weeks, Everton are unbeaten. That's what you want. Go five games unbeaten, and you see there's going to be, uh, you know, a lot, because there, there is still a lot of room up the table. Spies, they are going to get out of there. They are playing Chelsea. They will lose that game. I'm telling you for facts. Spurs will lose to Chelsea. So if we, if they lose Chelsea, they drew two two with Rennes, and that shows you they are not a strong side. We can go past Spurs, um, you know, up there. The likes of Brentford, Brentford are ahead of us, and the reason that they are ahead of us is because they beat us. That's that's it. If we had beaten them, we'd be ahead of them. So, I mean, I mean, let's 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 have a look at the table again. Right. Let's have it. Let's have a look at the table again because I, I'm looking at this as a perfect opportunity for us to get back to where we belong, uh, for us to get back to where we deserve to be. Right. So let, let let us look at the table. Right. Aston Villa are playing at the moment. I I, I don't know the score. I don't know the score. Uh, I really don't know the score. Uh, but they are playing at the moment, and uh, they are currently 13th. Right, they have lost Jack Grealish and they are still trying to find their footing. But they have scored five goals and conceded seven. That means they have a goal difference of negative two. We have a goal difference of negative seven. That's what I'm saying. We've got to score more goals. We have, we've got to do better. Right. But look at Leicester City. Right. Look at Leicester City. Leicester City have six points. They have played four games. Um, Watford have six points and they have actually uh, played five games. The reason as to why Watford are ahead of us is because they have scored more goals and considered less than we have done. That's it. But let's ask, uh, ask ourselves a question. How have Watford scored more goals than Arsenal? And how have they considered less goals than Arsenal? Absolutely despicable and unacceptable so what i'm you know what i'm looking at in this scenario is we can't we will get past watford right we will get past brentford that so that gives us the opportunity to sit um because I, I think leicester city will finish ahead of us sorry to say so that gives us the opportunity to sit uh in position 10 i think we will get the better of brighton by the end of the season, so we now can sit up. Uh, that you know, pushes us to top nine. We will get the better of Spurs, so that pushes us to uh, to top eight. And if we do work harder, we can be better than um, we can be better than uh, West Ham, and that puts us to position eight. Now, the real battle for Arsenal is going to be between us, and it's going to be between us. It it, it will be between Arsenal. West Ham, Spurs, and Leicester City, right? Forget Liverpool. Look, Everton a second. I still think Everton will lose points. I still think they will lose points, right? They lose more points. So Liverpool, Manchester City, Manchester United, Chelsea, 
Uh, this is one, two, three, four. I think they will make the top four, right? They will make the top four. Now, the top eight will be made up will be made of Arsenal, Leicester City here, then Everton. That that's already um, that's already seven, and then Spurs, right? That will make up the top eight. The difference is we do not want to be eighth. We want to be at least in position five. And to get to position five is the consistency, right? It's the consistency. What are our next games? I, if only I could look at Arsenal's next games, right? Our next fixtures are absolutely winnable. Absolutely winnable, right? Let's look at them. Um, right, right, right. Next fixtures, where are you? Next fixtures, where are you? Come on, right. So our next fixtures here, uh, here are our next fixtures. We will play AFC Wembley Don in the EFL Cup, a winnable fixture at the Emirates Stadium. That is in the third round of the EFL Cup. And then we shall host Tottenham Hotspur at the Emirates Stadium on Sunday. A winnable fixture. That is a game that shows, uh, for me, that's a game that shows that you're now ready, right? Sorry, right. These are our, you know, these are our next fixes. You know, the, you know, the, 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 the Spurs game comes at the right time. It tests where we, whether we are ready, you know, for the real challenge because it's going to come as a real, real challenge. And um, the more games to come, you have Brighton, which is a real test again. Uh, they have started to, they have started off very well. You have the likes of Crystal Palace, Patrick Vieira, uh, and a couple of others. I still think Arsenal do stand a chance to finish in the top seven this season. My prediction was we will finish around eighth and seventh, but probably sixth wouldn't you know wouldn't hurt. Go back to the Europa League. I want fifth. That's what I want. I want fifth so that. They can back us because if you if if, if Mikel can get uh, fifth fifth um, with this squad, probably they can back him. That's what we want, you know. Probably they can back him. So uh, a very a, a very not the best win in the world, but a very very important one. Thanks everybody for watching in. I'll speak to you very very soon.